everybody. My name is Chris Allenenny, and you're watching the albaniweather.ca podcast. Um, it is June 7th, and we have lots to talk about. I haven't been able to do one of these podcasts for a little bit, and in fact, I haven't been able to post on the blog much lately. It's just been too busy, uh, but uh, we got lots to talk about today. So let's do that, and uh, and we'll uh, we'll see what we got going on. So, um, first things first, uh, it is a beautiful sunny day. Uh, we've started out a little wet this month, but, uh, but it's beautiful out there now, 24 degrees, um, light breeze from the north, and uh, good air quality. We haven't had any rain in the past little while, um, and, uh, and our UV index here is, uh, is pretty high. It's currently just below 8 um so uh so you know it's this time of year when we actually get our highest uv indexes so make sure that you have protection if you're spending a lot of time out in the sun all right so um let's look today we're going to do a bit of a summary of may and of spring um so let me just bring up my uh summary here i haven't published this yet on uh the blog so you're getting a getting a first look at it i'll publish it once i uh once i publish the video here too um but i want to make sure that uh that you guys are able to see this so um yeah lots lots going on um but it was actually a fairly cool uh, spring certainly compared to last year um if you look at the maximum temperature here um, you'll see you know we were at historic highs we had a historic high 38 degrees 30 sorry 36 degrees um, last year uh, in spring that was in May um, last year so that was uh, and that really set us up for that uh, very hot weather into June which created the fire situation on Cameron Lake that we all remember so that was a historic year last year so we have come down a little bit uh, let me just get the larger version for us here there it is that's may so so this is the uh this is the graph from may uh so these are all the mays going back to the year 1900 um and we can see that uh last year was historic um, as far as uh, highs for may so um so that was last year this year we have come way down so it feels cooler um but in reality we are still above average uh, our average for may going across all of the you know the past 100 and, and some years is 20 degrees uh for a maximum temperature uh we were a little bit above that just around 30 uh, uh half thir 28 looks like maximum temperature um and uh, last year we were way up there um uh we got up to 36 at robertson creek a little bit less at mine um 34 and a half at uh at the airport um so uh, so that's uh that was very very hot so we came down we only got up to about 30 degrees this year um but uh, that's still above average for may um and uh you know that still represents warming so uh, so the trend here what i wanted to show you in this summary today um is that uh, we have really been in a drought for you know a good 10 years now you know whether it's a official um you know designation of a drought and we'll talk about the bc drought um monitor in a second here but um I'm going to show you uh, just down in the bottom of my summary here uh, what I found when I was looking at this um, is that in uh, in the past uh, 10 years if we look at the spring of the past 10 years so that's March April and May um, in those 10 year periods uh, in the past 10 years we have had seven years of the past 10 years have had less than 400 millimeters of rain total um 400 meters sounds like a lot uh but uh but if we look at the graph for spring um 
let's just look at that here. Uh, the average here is 357 millimeters. So for those three months, 357 millimeters is the average going all the way back to 1895 because um, rainfall actually was measured before temperature was measured on Beaver Creek. So um, so that's a very long, that's a very long period. Um, so 350 is the average. Um, so if we look at it as uh, any year below 400, um, then, you know, we can get it, we can get an idea of what, uh, you know, might have been lower than normal years. So seven of the last 10 years have had less than 400 millimeters of, of rain. So you can consider that less than average. Um, before that, uh, the, 20, the 10 years before that, 2005 to 2014, only three of those years uh, had less than 400 millimeters. Uh, before that, five, 1995 to 2004, uh, four, 1985 to 1994, um, six for 1975 to 1984. Although in this one, uh, 1983 uh, actually received 398 millimeters. So, I mean, this could actually be a five, uh, really, instead of a six. Um, but there you go. So six and then three in only three in 65 to 74. So, um, so we are definitely, you know, seeing more years with less rain, um, compared to our historical averages, what we would normally see over the, you know, 10 years. So, um, you know, I, I think that is why, uh, you know, we're, we're, we've certainly in the past two years have been in a drought situation and that's very much been in the news. Um, and the BC River Forecast Center has made a point of noting, uh, our deficit and Environment Canada has, has noted sort of our deficit of kind of catching up. Um, and that's what happened previously, right? So if you have three out of 10 years, that's, you know, you have seven other years there to have an average or, or above average amount of rain. Um, five of 10, four of 10, uh, five or six of 10, three of 10. So um, so normally we would have more than 400 millimeters. Um, now maybe the new normal is less than 400 millimeters a year. And that uh, for a whole spring is probably drought. So, um, so I that's, I think, uh, a really concerning trend, um, and it's something that you're able to actually pull out because this uh, this graph, you know, the rainfall graph is always so difficult because it's so scattered. Um, you know, it's hard to see those trends, so you really need to get into it to, to dig into it uh, to be able to see those trends. But if you look here on the side, and I think I pointed this out in other summaries, um, if you look on the very end, you know, the, those past 10 years, so there's 2015 uh, up to 2025. Uh, let me just make that bigger here. Um, this area from 2000 and what is that? Uh, 19. So from 2018 is these two right here. Um, and then we went way down 2019 started to recover a little bit through to 2025 but these this area this is a long period of small amounts of rain for that whole spring right so there's that 250 there's that 350 line 357 so that's the average um, but we've actually been quite a bit lower than that so, uh, you know, this is 300 is this line. So uh, that line there, that's 300. And if we look back, so this is a whole cluster here um, below 300, even getting down below 200 um, at times. Um, and if we look back, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of those clusters. Um, so this is pretty spread out, you know, it's, it's low one year, it's high the next year, it's low one year, it's higher the next year, it's low one year, it's higher the next year. So, so there's a lot more variability up here and sort of going back, uh, in time, whereas this is, this is a real cluster of low, 
um, rainfall in the spring. So I'm concerned about that. I, I'm willing to bet that, uh, you know, in agricultural ministries and, you know, those kinds of, of entities are concerned about that. Um, that's starting to look like a, a, a really bad trend. Um, we had the one year here that was 2000 and, uh, that's 2002. Um, so the, the year after the atmospheric rivers. So that was really the year of the atmospheric rivers, the winter of the atmospheric rivers. Um, so we had a big pop up there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is, uh, that's a concern. So, um, I think that's, that's the biggest thing. Uh, I think that, uh, that comes out of this summary. Um, I wanted to point out as well, um, the uh, snowpack situation. Um, so as of May 1st, uh, we were at 49% of normal for our snow on Vancouver Island, which is, you know, not great, um, but uh, not horrible. Um, and thanks, I think, in large part to that little bit of cool weather that we had at the end of May, um, as of June, we're still just at 50%. So we haven't really, you know, we haven't improved as far as getting back towards that average, um, you know, a, a, you know, a, a normal year. Um, but, uh, but at least we haven't gotten worse. So, uh, so we're 50% and you can see on the, the graph here, uh, just make that a little smaller. We can see this is the black line is this year. So we've been tracking really, really low, um, you know, the minimums setting new minimums um all along here pretty much all year had a bit of a, a bump there at the beginning of march when it was a little cooler we got a little bit of snow on the mountains um but then it uh, melted and we were still really at the bottom of our of our uh minimums there for averages um but that uh that little bit of cool weather at the end of may at least i think kept some snow up on the mountain um, probably didn't add to it, but at least kept it there. Um, so that's why you see that uh, that black line moving out. The white line here is the is the normal, is the average. So um, so uh, so got a little closer, even got into the twenty fifth, seventy fifth percentile. So that's at least positive. Um, it's not as bad as it could have been. You can see last year the purple line. Um, it just kept dropping, uh, and it's it it was it was terrible. And it was really the snow was essentially gone uh, throughout BC um, by mid June. So, um, so that's good. Um, again, this is all of BC. This is in Vancouver Island uh, specifically, but this is all of BC. So, so we at least got uh, got some good news out of that. Um, So that is our uh, that's our snowpack. So we're at about fifty percent. So that's that's okay. Um, of course, the other uh, big news of the month was the aurora. Um, so not necessarily weather, but space weather. Um, just I haven't had a chance to do a, a video since then. But what a spectacular display! I hope you guys were able to go and see it in person. Um, it really was just breathtaking. I've never seen anything like it. Um, I've never really, I mean, I've seen sort of wisps of the, of the aurora uh, at times, um, maybe even just, you know, changes in color of the sky, but I've never seen anything like that. Um, and it was, it was visible all across, I think pretty much the entire world, the entire Northern Hemisphere. Um, and I saw some, some uh, portions of uh, some pictures from Antarctica and from Chile and from Argentina. So there was, there was Aurora in the, in the Southern Hemisphere as well. Uh, but it just reached all, it, we reached down all the way down to Florida. Uh, they were seeing Aurora. Um, so just a really spectacular event. Um, and the results uh, up in Port Alberni, um, I mean, we just lucked out with really perfect weather. Um, that, uh, that there it was. And, and I, I, I love this picture. Um, I got, uh, I was out, I think this was, this was about one o'clock in the morning, I think, um, maybe 1230. No, I think it was one thirty. Um, anyway, I was out on the street. Oh, just watching it. Cause you could see it literally on the street, um, through your phone. You could actually see it in real life. Um, but man, it just looking at it through a camera or a phone, 
camera, uh, it just popped right out because it was able to get that longer exposure a little bit. So um, it just looked amazing. Uh, so I, I love this picture. It's got the got our house, which we had just painted, um, the nice blue, uh, and uh, and then we had the aurora above, and and I managed to get the uh, the Big Dipper uh, in there as well. So I mean, just it makes me smile every time I see that picture. It's so awesome. Um, probably gonna get it framed or something. Um, so I hope you were able to see that. If you weren't, uh, I have a I have a time lapse um, that you can check it out on YouTube. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> I waved the camera uh, just so that I could have uh, you know for for posterity to have you know the aurora behind me. That's pretty awesome. Uh, so uh, so I have a time lapse there. You'll be able to see it from all three cameras um which uh the the east camera uh was really the best one it it's faces more northeast um so it's really perfect it turns out for uh for the aurora so but all three excuse me all three cameras could see it the south one it's amazing that you could actually see it coming over top uh and into the southern sky um you know we're at 40 49 degrees uh north and for the aurora to be able to come down that far is that's pretty amazing so um so that's that's great uh check it out it's only a minute and a half and uh and it uh it, it really shows off the, the aurora really nicely uh there's lots of other pictures on uh the post i made there um, if you haven't seen them already there's there's some great ones in there um so go check it out um so uh yeah i not a huge amount uh other things on the summary, um, you know, no, no real records, which was actually the second time uh, that, uh, second or third actually month that we haven't really had a whole lot of records set, it's been sort of very average. Um, so we only had one record this, this set this uh, month at the airport. Um, there it is, May 2nd, a low temperature, minus 0.9. Um, but it wasn't anywhere near the all-time low, um, which isn't a big surprise. But I don't, I can't remember the last time we set an all-time low. It was, um, you know, I think earlier this year maybe we set one, but uh, but it's very rare now that we set any all-time lows. Um, so uh, so that was the only record that was set at the airport, and it wasn't it wasn't an all-time record. So um, so that's that. As far as you know, temperatures in general were pretty sorry, temperatures in general were pretty average, um, but they do continue to uh, show that that gradual uh, rise. So um, so here's our mean temperatures, the average temperatures for spring, um, and May is the same. Uh, and you can really see, even if you take out this this outlier, the, the, the extreme here, 1954, um, even you, you sort of put your finger over it, um, you can really see there's an obvious trend here, both on the bottom side moving up and the top side moving up, uh, just in general. Uh, it's a lot, it was a lot more uh, scattered and, uh, you know, not a whole lot of trend there um, overall, but uh, but definitely a trend happening here in the uh, in the later years. So, um, so yeah, so, you know, we were just around an average, uh, this year, nothing, nothing really big. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's our look at that. Um, so I think, uh, what else do we want to look at? The La Nina. So the La Nina forecast, El Nino forecast, um, it was already looking like El Nino was pretty much done, um, and we were already transitioning last month to a La Nina state. Um, and the latest update, which is only from May 9th, so they'll they'll release another update here in a few days, probably next week. Um, uh, they're expecting that uh, we'll have La Nina conditions even as soon as this month or next month. So. Um, uh, so we're we're expecting to transition to La Nina, um, and uh, and what does that mean? Usually that means cool and wet. Uh, so one strong La Nina that we had was uh, um, the atmospheric river, 
Um, that did occur during an atmospheric error, but I don't know if we can actually pinpoint La Nina as being a, a real cause of that, um, or whether it's it was just an extreme event um, that became more extreme perhaps with climate change, with added moisture. Um, but uh, but yeah, so, um, so in general, cool and wet. Um, this is the December to February. That's usually what happens in December to February. Um, La Nina is expected to come in uh come into force uh you know july august september kind of thing uh if it isn't in already um, so you can see june august says 49 percent chance july to september 69 percent chance so um so perhaps uh perhaps a little cooler in the fall um a little wetter than normal uh which would be nice for um uh for the drought conditions as long as we don't get it all at once uh in an atmospheric river so uh, so that's the uh, the El Nino outlook. Um, last part here, uh, the time lapses. Time lapses look great this year or this month. Um, there's um, there's three now, of course. So those three cameras, the two new ones for the east and western view. Um, I'm working on uh, the software side on the back end. Um, on creating those time lapses and i may create a time lapse that has all three um embedded into one video so so have you know the east south and west um lined up beside each other uh in one video uh, i'd like to do that i'm i'm not sure how that's going to look whether it'll be really uh really useful and and you know be able to really see it and appreciate it um, but I'm going to see how it works. Um, but I'm going to need to use a different computer to do that. Uh, the computer I'm using right now is is pretty old and not not able to to handle all that stuff. So um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that. Um, okay, so uh, so that's uh, that's most of the update. Um, you'll see uh, there's the uh, the values from the city. Um, we were uh, we were above normal on all of our temperatures. Um, 1.6, 1.4, 2.1 um, for minimum, mean, and max. Um, we were obviously below average for rain. Um, and the what really sticks out to me is the uh, days of rain. Um, so we had 13 days where we had at least a trace of rain, 0.2 millimeters. Um, only two days with more than 5 millimeters and nothing larger than that so uh, nothing larger than 10 or 25 so um so that's abnormal obviously we should have at least two days uh with over 10 and 0.3 um so once every three years let's say um with 25 millimeters oh i did actually look i looked at that um the last time we had more there we had we haven't had a day uh in may of rain uh, with more than 25 millimeters uh, for more than 10 years. So that's May 15th, 2011 was the last time we had more than 25 millimeters uh, in one day in the month of rain, in, in the month of rain, in the month of May. Um, so that's a long time. And that sort of correlates with that 10 year window um, that, uh, you know, we've, we've really been in a drought situation for, for a full 10 years. So, so, uh, yeah, we haven't had a, haven't had a day with 25 millimeters or more, uh, since, uh, 2011 in May. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Um, so that is, uh, that's that, uh, the, um, uh, airport statistics, um, not quite as, far above normal so the mean was 0.2 so basically average um the max was a little more um the minimum was was a little bit less so uh, so that's uh, that's why we were we were right around normal there zero um so uh, but we were definitely low on rain at the airport as well um and uh, and the robertson creek uh, or the days of precipitation uh, Robertson Creek uh, normally gets 14, 5, 2, and just more than just more than one every three years. Um, but again, we only had 12 days of rain recorded at the airport, uh, two with more than five millimeters, and nothing higher than that for 10 and 25. So um, yeah, it was a it was a dry month, even though maybe it didn't feel uh, hot. Um, okay. Uh, 
let's look at the forecast going out a little later. Okay, so if we look at Port Alberni, oops, look at Port Alberni here, and we'll look at the long range forecast. We can have a look out into the month. Um, so there's our long range. So we can see there's uh, it's going to be warm here for the next couple days into Monday. Um, it does cool off a little bit. Um, the middle of the month here, um, so might have a little bit of rain maybe, uh, not the 15th, but it does warm up again after that, so um, so that's good. Uh, yeah, it looks like a little bit of rain possible uh, next weekend, the weekend of 14th, 15th, 16th, um, and then drying again uh, after that weekend. Um, doesn't look like any large wind is expected. Um, cloud coverage, so you can see, you know, today we're going to be nice and nice and clear all day and then have some partly cloudy. Um, we'll have uh, a little bit of rain possible up until next, the end of next weekend, and then we have another uh, area with some clear skies here, so that's good. So that's uh, 16, 17, 18. Um, so there you go. Uh, well, it looks like a little bit of uh, thunderstorm possibility activity there in the last, uh, in the middle of the, the week, in a couple weeks. Um, so that's cool. Um, but uh, yeah, so looks like a fairly, uh, a fairly normal month. Doesn't look too extreme. Um, maybe a little cool in the next, uh, after this hot spell in the next few days. Um, probably cool down a little bit, uh, and then uh, and then we'll warm up a little towards the end of the month. Um, let's look at that's the, the environment uh, Canada. There's the drought. So let's look at the drought information. So we're just going to look at the drought map here. Um, we'll see. There we go. Um, so not too bad on the west coast of Vancouver Island here. It's still just at drought level one, which is good. Um, but uh, Port Alberni and the east side of the island uh, is at drought level two. Uh, we'll see the northeast is the uh, is definitely the worst off drought level five uh, or four um, across pretty much the entire northeast. Um, and uh, but yeah, so not horrible. Uh, the central interior is is at level three, which isn't great. Um, but you know, at least the southern areas here are just at one or two. So so that's good. Um, you know, it's not still not normal, but uh, the only parts that uh, that are not at a drought level of some sort is the is the extreme northwest there. So. So that's the drought situation. BC wildfire sort of mirrors that. So you can see all the fires still happening in the northeast. Um, nothing really to speak of yet in the uh, in the southern part of the province, which last year at this time we were pretty much full on uh, with the fire season. So across the whole southern part of half of the province. So so that's good. That's a nice change from last year. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's all we got for now. Um, I'll leave it there for this update. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope it was useful and uh, I hope to do these more um, in the next few weeks and uh, see you then.